Hi, this is Tim from Esri. In this video, we'll follow the Create a Project tutorial in ArcGIS Pro. A project stores work related to a theme, a task, or an area of interest. It can include maps, layouts, connections to data, and other items. In this project, we'll make a map of the San Gorgonio Wilderness Area near Redlands, California. We'll add online data of endangered species habitat and do some map exploration and analysis. You can follow the step-by-step -step instructions for this tutorial using the ArcGIS Pro documentation. Okay, let's get started. We've started ArcGIS Pro and we're signed in. On the start page, you can create a new project from any of these templates. We'll use the map template, which creates a project with a map in it. We give the project a name and click OK. The project opens with a topographic base map centered on the United States. The base map and its extent depend on settings in your ArcGIS organization, so you might see something different. To locate the area of interest, we'll search for a place name. Click the Map tab and click Locate. On the Locate pane, we'll type San Gorgonio Mountain and press Enter. A temporary marker is added to the map. That marker goes away when we close the Locate pane, so we'll add a graphic that will stay on the map. On the Graphics tab, we'll change the default symbol to a triangle and clear the selection. We should also rename the graphics layer to something meaningful. We'll rename the map to and save the project. The topographic base map would work for our project, but we'll switch to the imagery base map instead. Now we'll click the Add Data button and add some online data. We'll go to Living Atlas and look for data that shows wilderness areas. Searching on the term wilderness gives a lot of results. The first one, Wilderness Areas in the United States, looks promising. We need to expand the layer to see what's in it. It's actually a group layer made up of two layers. One is non-federal lands. Those are the white blocks. We'll turn that off. The other layer is federal land, symbolized by agency. We can click on features to get more information. This is the San Gorgonio Wilderness. This is San Jacinto, and this is also San Gorgonio, managed by a different department. We'll focus on the part of the San Gorgonio wilderness managed by the Forest Service. We could just ignore the other features, but we can also select the feature of interest and make a new layer from it. To do that, we'll select the layer in the Contents pane, click the Data tab on the ribbon, and click Layer from Selection. The new layer comes in at the top of the contents pane, and we can remove the other one. The new layer consists of just the one feature we selected, so we want to change the symbology to reflect that. We'll click Symbology on the Layer Context menu to open the Symbology pane. We'll use a single symbol and choose a color, and we'll rename the layer. Double-clicking a layer is a quick way to open its properties. If we check the layer's data source, we see that it's still the online web layer from Living Atlas. We'll add transparency to the layer and move the mountain up to the top of the contents list. Now we'll zoom in to the selected feature and create a bookmark so we can return to this location whenever we need to. We'll clear the selection and save the project again. We're ready to add more online data, a layer of endangered species habitat. This time, we'll search ArcGIS Online. This gives us access to a huge amount of data, although it's not curated by Esri like the Living Atlas data. But in this case, 
we're looking for a specific data set that we already know and trust. We'll search for it by name, using quotation marks to look for an exact match. When we add the layer to the map, we see a few areas of critical habitat, mostly near the edges of the wilderness area. Let's identify some features. We'll rename the layer. And now we'll do some spatial analysis by clipping the habitat layer to the boundary of the wilderness area. This will create a new data set stored locally on our computer that contains only the habitat within the wilderness area. On the Analysis tab, we'll select the Pairwise Clip tool from the Analysis Gallery. We can see a preview of how the tool works. And we'll set the tool parameters. The input features are the critical habitat layer. Those are the features that we want to clip. The clip feature is the wilderness area. We'll give the new output feature class a name and click Run. A new layer is added to the contents pane. We don't need the old layer, so we'll remove it. Zoom in a little bit. Open the layer attribute table. The wilderness area provides habitat for three endangered species. If we come over to the catalog pane, under databases, we can browse into the project geo database and see the data set we just created. Since the habitat layer represents three different species, the symbology should show that. We'll open the symbology pane and change the symbology method from single symbol to unique values. We'll add the values. Notice that we're symbolizing the common name attribute by default. We'll pick a different color scheme, show their names, and pick the dark two scheme. We'll turn off the symbol for all other values, which we're not using. We can make this purple a little brighter and take a look at the pop-up. That's the bird we saw at the beginning of the video. And that's the end.